I'm really excited to transition to our next panel because these are people who I get to work with all the time. And um, in fact, I would say that one of the uh, silver linings of the pandemic has been the opportunity to engage with research park sites in, in ways that have been more intensive than ever. And we can talk about that a little bit when we talk in our panel, but I'm Laura Blyle. Yes, my name is Laura. Um, I'm the other Laura at Research Park. I don't mind being called that. I'm the Director of External Engagement here. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, and we're here to talk about the future workforce in ag tech. And this is um, very broad and topic, but I think in our case, we're gonna be talking about how it relates to the Research Park. Throughout the day, you've probably heard us mention and allude to the corporate innovation centers here in the research park, many of whom are employing a mix of full-time uh, professionals as well as a student workforce team that um, is working on functional products and, and work for, for their companies. And more than 800 students who work in the research park at any given time. So without further ado, we're, I'm gonna have my panel uh, introduce themselves quickly and then we're gonna get into the meat of our discussion, which is really, we wanna understand what is this model like and what are the students doing and, and what are really, what is the value to your companies as well as the value to the students. So Blake, I'm gonna give it to you to take it away. Thank you so much to Bayer for being our presenting sponsor today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your center. Thank you, Laura. My name is Blake Giles, head of the Bayer Innovation Center located here in Wonderful Research Park, uh, where our goal is to complement our organization's purpose of science for better life and our vision, health for all, hunger for none. And we do this uh, focusing on the crop science side of our, our house uh, by building the talent pipeline, both through interns, development of our full-time employees that work with those students, and then also through partnership and collaboration with the university, and accomplishing that through innovative projects. All right, Misha. Thanks so much, Laura, and thanks for uh, including me in the Ag Tech Summit. Really excited to be here. Um, I'm the site manager at the Agco Acceleration Center located in the Research Park. Um, Agco is a distributor, manufacturer, designer of ag tech equipment. Our mission is um, uh, to develop technology for feeding the future farmers of the world. And so really excited to be here. The office opened in 2017. Um, since then, we've grown our program, our internship program tremendously. We uh, you know, support about 30 interns right now across the entire corporation. We, um, you know, staff augmentation, full-time conversion, and really making an impact on the corporation's bottom line by um, completing these projects and then giving students the opportunity to find um, you know, career paths. And we'll get into that more in just a second. April, uh, you're probably the newbie to the research park, but believe it or not, I think you arrived just a little bit pre-pandemic, but um, tell us about the ADM Modeling Center. Yeah, thanks, Laura. So my name is April Hofford, and I lead the ADM Modeling Center uh, in Research Park, as well as our modeling capability within our research organization for ADM. So, you know, just like the rest of the company, um, you know, we're using um, the power of nature to reach uh, everybody's lives. And so what we do in the, in the modeling center is we um, use mathematical models and chemical engineering principles in order to help to guide research, uh, help to um, minimize the amount of bench scale and pilot scale testing that we have to do to, you know, really speed up our, our, our trajectory, trajectory to get from uh, you know, new ideas to commercialized processes. So this is a, um, essentially the heart of what we're trying to get at, but tell us specifically, how is your organization benefiting from its student workforce at Research Park? And when we talked before we had our pre-call, you guys provided some really impactful examples. So Misha, I'm gonna uh, get, throw it over to you to, to give us an example of some projects that have been entirely driven by student talent, which may surprise some of the folks out there on the call. Yeah, so I mean, the the first thing I'll start with is the most fantastic thing about having this opportunity here in Research Park is the innovation that the students are really able to bring back into the company. These students have access to cutting edge faculty, staff, research, many of which we heard about today. 
Um, and so they have sort of a direct line into bringing that into corporations. And so at um, the Acceleration Center, there have been several projects that have been entirely spearheaded by our interns. These have grown from small ideas into full broke full-blown multi-year projects that are funded by our corporation. Um, many of you last year or years prior have probably heard about our augmented reality initiatives. Um, and so that is an idea that came from my boss and he um, essentially built out a team of interns that has now sort of taken it and run with it and made it something really meaningful and impactful for our company. Um, in the same vein, I think during this panel, you're he you'll hear a little bit about data analytics and how important it is to us. Um, we've had several students from the School of Information Sciences um, who just kind of joined our team with a little bit of an idea and then how now built out dashboards and things that our senior leadership and executives are using on a daily basis to make, you know, make decisions. And so, um, you know, they are working on uh, things that impact our day to day functionality. So April, um, how about you tell us a little bit about the students at um, the EDM Modeling Center and really I think you know you were as I mentioned earlier new to the organization I'm, I'm curious did it surprise you what they were doing when you first uh, stepped foot here. Uh, no, only because I had worked really closely with them prior to taking over the modeling center so uh, you know. Prior to prior to being the site lead for the modeling center, I was a project uh, engineer for research, and so you know all of the research projects use the modeling center to help them identify you know what the big levers are in the cost of producing you know any sort of um, you know chemical food, uh, whatever we're working on at the time. You know, for me, the most impactful piece of that comes from. What, uh, a lot of times we aren't just working on you know pure research projects a lot of times the the modeling center is getting requests to help the plant out with issues that they're having optimizing some of their processes or you know maybe uh, maybe the crop has changed and, and um the the composition of the crop has changed during a certain year and it affects you know the the downstream um, processes and using modeling to help kind of identify those pieces and help identify what levers can be um, adjusted to to mitigate those changes has been super impactful for our company. So Blake, I think one of the things we've heard today is about how ag has changed and how ag is, ag is changing and how it will continue to change. And so the workforce, I think, is um, no different and will and will require that change uh, moving forward. So tell us how Bayer is infusing um, uh, the or is through its your innovation centers and is infusing the team with a modern workforce. Sure. So we were fortunate to forecast early on uh, just the data that we've been able to collect in the fields of knowing that there's going to be uh, an ever increasing importance of students and, and full-timers with backgrounds in software engineering, data science, but it's really exploded over the past few years uh, in particular. And um, I just got to say, real thankful for the College of ACES and, and them also recognizing that, you know, we heard from Matt Hudson, Dean Kidwell on how there's crop science plus X. Uh, we, we've noticed the same kind of thing, agronomy plus X. Um, where having a background in both the, the domain and the data science aspects is really uh, where we need to be to be able to make those advancements uh, moving forward. So I know we were joking earlier that if you say the word ecosystem that you have to pay $10 every time. So in this case, it might be a data science or data analytics. Every time we say that we might have to pay, I don't know, uh, $15, 50, you guys can describe that. But um, what are the skills, so speaking of which, what are the skills that are in demand now that might not have been the, the case five years ago? And April, you might have a little bit different of a perspective on this too in, uh, in what as well. Well, I'm gonna owe $15 because uh, <laughs> you know, we, we, have, we primarily have been uh, recruiting and hiring chemical engineering students, both students and grad students. Um, for the modeling center uh, historically. Um, and we are really starting to look more at um, students who not only have that chemical engineering background, but also have 
some data science capabilities, or even more importantly, some programming capabilities with a lot of the new programming languages or relatively new, I guess, you know, um, we're trying to build out a lot of different models um, using more than just the softwares that have been available to us in the past. And so having students who have some software development uh, understanding, uh, at least enough to build relatively simple tools that can be used for the long term uh, is really what we're looking for. And I know we focus a lot on skills when we're talking with students. We often tell them that, you know, if you're looking for an internship at the research park, focus on skills. And so Misha, just what are what are some of the impact that these skills are changing so rapidly? How, how does that impact your uh, organization and your program here? Well, Laura, I'll probably owe like $100 by, by the end of my response to you. Um, you know, echoing where this question came from and what April said, um, it's sort of a basic requirement at this point to have some understanding of data and telling a story, big data, working with um, just large quantities of data. And the reason I say that is because, you know, every aspect of what we do at AGCO is a decision made on some criteria and some information. And so to be able to take that and cultivate it into something meaningful requires um, a tremendous amount of insight. Skills like, you know, AWS, Tableau, Python. I mean, these are just sort of the basics we look for when I look at any resume. They're becoming the Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel of 10 or 15 years ago, right? So um, that's, I think, a minimum. I mean, even on a personal note, I graduated from the MBA. Uh, for, um, I got my MBA from the U of I five years ago, and I didn't have any data background. And it's sort of a big gap in my background now, right? So um, I think it's a critical, critical piece of where the workforce is going and just being able to tell those stories in a meaningful way um, up to your leadership. So throughout the day today, we we actually did a poll earlier asking people where where they were coming from in the sense of were they coming from the tech side of the house? Were they coming from the ag side of the house? Reflecting that ag tech is really broad and that it, it is really uh, interdisciplinary in its nature and also um, is something that maybe, you know, five years ago, everyone would have just assumed, oh, let's just recruit some kids on the farm. And actually we heard from lots of people who grew up on farms today, but we also know that a lot of people, the students in your organizations probably didn't have um, that same background. So I'm just curious, what kind of messages are resonating with the students that you're recruiting into your organizations as to why ag tech should be part of their career trajectory? And I'll start with uh, Blake for that. Sure. So I, I think there are three key things that I'm hearing a lot from students when we ultimately end up interviewing them or go to various career fairs. I think the, the first one is obviously our culture and diversity. Um, from a global company standpoint, you know, we, we operate in over 143 countries. Over 33,000 of our crop science employees operate from um, 88 different countries. And so it's been fitting for the interns that we've had from 10 different countries for them to feel kind of right at home. Um, our interns also are put on real projects with real teams, just like uh, a lot in Research Park. You know, we're not unique in that aspect. Uh, but our projects and the interns are often given the great visibility to our leadership teams. And I think the excitement from our employees comes through as well. And uh, thirdly, I think it also comes to the commitment that we make to them and their experience with us. A great example there being how we adapted uh, last summer's intern program. Uh, we had over 350 North American interns uh, and we migrated all of those to be able to be successful work from home efforts. And so this year when we were recruiting for those roles that definitely did not go unnoticed and, and played a big part, I think too, in, in our commitment to them. So ADM may be ABM's message might be a little different, April, as you know, you sit at the intersection of ag and food, and we know everyone likes to eat. So what are the messages that are resonating with the students you're recruiting? Yeah, I, um, you know, some of the things are the same. You know, we certainly get a lot of um, interest in ADM because of its diversity. Um, but what I hear a lot from the students when I ask, you know, why are you interested in working for ADM? Um, has to do with food security, um, you know, 
food innovation, making sure that we have enough food to um, you know, feed the world you know, 50 years from now um, and how we do that and what ADM's role is gonna be in that, as well as um, you know, being a good kind of environmental steward and practicing sustainability. So those are probably the, the biggest buzzwords that we hear uh, when we are looking at new talents and what they're looking for in a company. So what do you view, I'll ask this to all of you, what do you view as the role of your organizations in making an intern quote unquote full-time ready? Um, how, how is this a professional development experience, um, opportunity for them just as it is a opportunity for your company to get insights and innovation and skills that it might not otherwise have? So I'll, I'll throw that to you, Misha, first. Yeah, well, we really look to them for information and as leaders, um, you know, they are bringing so much knowledge into our organization that they are so often, you know, running meetings with leadership, bringing their ideas um, up to the top and actually making these impacts that I've talked about so much. And so when you are a sophomore, junior, senior, master student, and you get these opportunities to essentially be intertwined into what makes an organization you're not it's not even practice you're you're doing it right you're actually sitting in a meeting with vps and sharing your thoughts and um i don't i don't think that there's anything more tangible you could do to prepare yourself to be full-time ready the other thing i'll mention is um at least at agco and i think this is the same for many other park companies um our interns stay on with us for multiple semesters and what that allows us to do is give them not just exposure to their technical projects, but to what corporate culture looks like and what it means to be a part of corporate culture and have an impact on it. And so they've gotten both sides of it by the time they spent two or three semesters with us. And so it helps them kind of just um, have that confidence to go out there and, and say, yeah, I can sit in a meeting with a VP and really deliver my ideas in a meaningful way. And Blake, I know that mentorship is a big part of Bayer's culture. We've heard that throughout the day. Is that part of how, how you're making these students uh, attractive and, and frankly, sometimes attractive to other companies too? So um, shh, we won't say that. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, kind of like what, what Misha had alluded to in, in uh, what she just shared, uh, our student interns also are, are pretty much recognized as employees in our internal system. So, our intensive onboarding that we do have, which is why we're pretty strict on our start dates uh, with online learning curriculum, uh, professional development training that we have. There's also the, the feedback sessions that, um, uh, and we're not unique here, but a lot of mentors uh, twice a term are giving feedback to interns. And so they're able to have their chance to get improvements and, and learn how to present different types of information depending on the audience. And then uh, I think you also had asked, you know, what are we doing to provide them with additional opportunities? Our full-time employees are also advocating on our interns behalf. Uh, and one example there is actually two of our, mo of our three most recent conversions uh, to full-time were actually hired by teams in our company that have yet to sponsor a project at our innovation center. So uh, a lot of uh, interdisciplinary type team conversations as well and, and visibility for our interns. Anything you wanna to add to that, April? Um, I mean, it, what I would say would probably echo very closely to what both Misha and Blake said. Uh, you, you know, the only thing that I, I would add to that is something that I'm, I'm pretty proud of, I guess, and, and plan to continue. Um, so prior to me taking over the modeling center, it was really kind of a black box for the rest of the company. You know, you'd send your data in and you, then you'd get some results out. You never really talked to anybody. Um, and it, it, we now are fully integrated into project teams at research. Um, you know, our students get, uh, as Misha said, you know, daily connection with directors and VPs in, in talking about what they did and how they completed the model. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to mention is that, you know, I've, I've been lucky to have been able to bring on actually four full-time students onto my, or not students, sorry, full-time engineers onto my team as well now. And of those four full-time engineers, I've actually, three of them were former interns. Uh, in addition to that, this year, we've also uh, transferred two 
two interns to full-time positions at plant. So, you know, this is something that is extremely important to me. Uh, it doesn't make any sense as far as I'm concerned to spend, you know, months and months and months, you know, bringing these people into the fold to not do whatever we can to find places for them in the company, uh, especially when we know how much value they can add. So we call that growing your own, no pun intended. Um, so we have a couple of questions that are actually somewhat similar, but um, a little bit different. Uh, one is ag tech talent market is a candidates market given the lack of interest or knowledge about opportunities in ag. Can you share a few strategies your organizations have to attract students to your field? And then another question that's sort of related to this is about uh, students from urban environments. So we have a large K through 12 population, the Chicago land region and other urban areas not connected to agriculture or engaged in agriculture related education. This represents a significant untapped potential workforce. How can companies better reach urban area students and raise awareness about the future of tech and food and agriculture and the wide breadth of job and career pathway opportunities in the agri-food industry as a whole. Who wants to take either one of those ideas? Misha, I think you should since you're from, you were, uh, came here from what, New York City? having some unmute. Sorry. There yes. we go. Unmuting. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, I came, I came here from New York City um, with very little, no ag background prior to Agco. And um, I think, you know, and we talked a little bit about this as we were prepping for this panel, what attracts people to the ag tech market in the first place. And I think you know, there is the mission that we all know, feeding the world, and how are we going to continue to feed the world as the population grows, but it needs to feel like you're directly making an impact, and I think that's one of the most important things. Um, I know that the projects that are worked on at the Acceleration Center literally are going to impact how the world is fed. There's weeks, months, decades to come. And I think conveying that message to folks both at the college level, at the student level, at the high school level um, is so important. I mean, this is their future, right? This is the future we are sort of laying the foundation for these K through 12 students. And so, um, you know, I think companies um, in ag tech have a social responsibility to continue to push that message out into these urban areas and let students know that, you know, you're in New York City, you're in Chicagoland, but you still have opportunities to kind of be meaningful and be impactful as it concerns your future. Um, the other thing I'll mention, and I won't spend too much time here is um, whether it's because of COVID or not, the way work is happening is changing also. So opportunity to work for an ag tech company doesn't mean you have to live in the Midwest. It doesn't mean you have to live on a farm. It doesn't mean you have to even visit a farm. You can be sitting anywhere and be impactful. And so, um, you know, we do a lot of remote work, uh, both at Agco and definitely at the Acceleration Center. And it's sort of been propelled in this last year. And so I encourage the students to continue to find ways um, to, to find those passion moments for them and find ways to get connected back into these corporations. And I know, you know, Bayer headquartered in or St. Louis and ADM now moved its headquarters to Chicago. So maybe those, those will have impacts in those cities as well as we move forward. I think that's unfortunately all about the time we have for today. Any last thoughts that you want to throw out there uh, or any uh, encouragement to those students or others who want to find their way into this industry? I think to wrap up, you know, my, my advice is really just to have that takeaway of it's, it's really agronomy or crop science plus X, um, the importance of being able to interpret data data analytics, and, and maybe more importantly, how to convey and communicate that out, uh, importance of sort of data storytelling uh, to various leaders, whether it's uh, you know tech to business side, um, all of those are, are invaluable skill sets to where, um, you know, as our senior vice president mentioned today, it, there's no lack of data now. It's, you know, how do we leverage the data that we're getting in? And that's, I, I think, gonna be the future of, of modern ag. 
Yeah, I guess, I mean, the only, the only thing that I would, would say to, to kind of sum up is that just kind of focusing on your question about the, the rural and the ag tech. I mean, I grew up in a rural area, certainly did not grow up on a farm. Um, you know, the, one of the things that I talk to um, our, our potential candidates about is that, you know, it's, it's you, the, the, the breadth of stuff that ADM handles goes from the farmer to the end consumer. And so you don't have to have necessarily that ag background to be involved in a company that is, is doing things that support agriculture and that thrive on agriculture. And, you know, it ultimately there, you know, if, uh, for, for our, for my um, students or my, my interns, using their chemical engineering knowledge is going to be what, what sets them apart and being able to, to manage that data is what, what's going to set them apart. They don't have to be from a farm. They don't have to have, you know, grown up on a farm or anything. So, um, you know, we're looking for people who are excited to work for a company to learn and to bring their, their training uh, to the workforce. Well, thank you all very much. We are going to wrap it up here and uh, start to transition to our next panel.